Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part three in a nine part series of tutorials on desktop publishing using Microsoft Publisher. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to design a publication. My name is Meme JM, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. When we are designing a publication using Microsoft the Publisher, the use of master pages comes in handy. A master page is a publication page that contains the design and layout elements that you want to repeat on multiple pages in your publication. A master page is used to design the general layout that needs to be applied in all other pages of the publication. Some of the designs and layout elements that are set using master pages include anything that you can put on a publication page, as well as some elements that can only be set up on a master page. For example, the handers, the footers, and layout guides. If you are creating a publication that will have several pages, such as a book or project report, it is important that you lay out a common layout foundation for all the pages for the sake of consistency and cohesiveness. These pages used to design a common layout to be applied in the other pages of a publication are called master pages or a document master. By creating multiple master pages, you can have a variety of layouts that you can apply to any of the pages in your publication. One advantage of using master pages for the common elements is that it gives your publication a more consistent appearance. You can also create and update these elements in one place instead of changing them on each page where the design elements appear. To create a master page, on the view menu, you click on master page. Then click on add master page from the master page toolbar. In the new master page dialog box, do any of the following. In the page ID, that is one character box, type a single character identifier for your new master page. In the description box, type a brief description of your new master page. If you want your master page to be a two page spread, you select on two page master. Finally, you click on OK. The following is therefore a sample demonstration and on how we can create a master page and add some text and pictures into it to appear in all the pages in the publication within the publication called Introduction to Emily Swap. So when we are in our publication, that is the publication by the name, Introduction to Emily Swap, we can be able to proceed and set up our master page so that we can include those aspects or elements that we would like to appear in all the pages within our publication. So what are we supposed to do? Whenever you are in your publication, like the way we are, and you see that your page is not clear, you can always zoom it so as to make it legible to you. So to zoom it so that you can be able to see the various aspects in our page, 
we need to click on the view menu and then we can for example click 100 percent so let me click on 100 percent so that is my page i can still zoom it further by using the zoom at the button here so let me adjust it a little bit that way so i have just dragged the slide here below on the right hand side of my screen at the bottom of the page by clicking on the slide for the zoom and then i can increase it using or towards the addition side or i can reduce it towards the negative side so let me retain it at at that point let me increase it a little bit up to that point so this is our publication this publication has a single page as you can see let us now include into it a master page so to have or to include a master page we click on the view menu and then we click on master page this one here next to normal and a single page so i can click on master page by default the page that is displayed in a situation where our publication has only a single page this page is being treated as a master page but we can add a master page so to add a master page you proceed and click on and master page and a master page you can see that under master page menu we have anti master page to page master apply to duplicate the name show header footer and we have the close master page so let me add a master page into my publication by clicking on and master page so we can add a master page under the new master page you can see we have page id and description so let me retain them as proposed our first page is being treated as the first master page so let me click on master page b i click ok so we have two pages let's see if these two pages are master pages let me click on the close master page so you can see we have one page uh, in one document which is displayed but for us to be able to see the master pages for this publication you click on the view and then click on master page so we have two master pages we have master page a and master page b so we can now proceed and add certain details into our master pages let me add something into the master page in this master page i'm going to include or to insert a picture a small picture that i would like to appear in all my subsequent pages whenever the master page a will be included so i am going to design master page a so let me click on master page a under pages after you click the master page the master page will be displayed on the screen so you can proceed and design it as you want you can adjust even the layout you can adjust the guides as you want if for example want to adjust the top margin guide i just need to point out into it like that i press down my mouse button and then i can drag it to where i want and release the same 
applies to the rest of the margins. Now let me add a picture. So to insert a picture that would like to appear in my pages, I'll click on insert. Then let me click on picture. So I'll click on pictures. Let me browse for a picture. Let me click on desktop publishing and then I can select a picture here. So let me click on this picture. Meme best, and I click insert. Where do I want this picture to appear in my publications? I want it to appear on the side. So let me click on this placeholder. I'll click on this placeholder. I want to move the picture with the placeholder. So I'll drag this picture to a corner, like to that part. And then I will release. Let me drag it further. So that is the picture that I want to appear on every page. Let me add another one at the bottom of my page here. Let me click again on insert, then picture. I choose another picture. And in this case, I'll choose this flower. And then I'll click insert. Let me adjust it a little bit that way. And then I drag it to this corner there. From there, let me add, let me add a header on this document. Let me add some text. So I can click on show header, so put a button. Once I click there, let me type some text like beside, beside by M A M. Swap. And then I can format this text the way I want. So I'll click on Format menu. Or let me click on Home. Once I click under Home, I can check that color or that uh, font type. Then font size, I choose 14. The color, I love blue. And then I can left align it. And then I can adjust this placeholder a little bit so that it does not uh, touch my picture. So I can adjust it that way. Let me change this font type by choosing another one like Alien black. Let me make it italic. Let me italicize it. So I'll click on home. First of all, I select my text. I click home. Then I'll click italicize. They can also click bold. Let me choose bold that way. And then I can also um. Let me change this alignment a little bit. Let it be center aligned that way. And then, oh, let me let me have it uh, um, left aligned by clicking on that is right aligned by clicking on right alignment. And then let me add a footer. Let me add a footer here. So click on um, insert and then uh, under the footer I will click on the page number. Which uh, page number style do I want? So I can click bottom center. Let me click bottom center that way, 
And we can still change it. We can change it to look the way we want, even by typing some text here. So always you can click on insert menu, then insert a footer, or that is click on a footer button. Let me click on footer here. You can see the footer is on the there. So what I need is just to choose the what I want to be at the footer. You can also type your own text. You can also add something. Let me click here and add some text like um, thank you, thank you, thank you for being part, being part of my journey. Then I can cut this text, then add it before the page number. Then I can paste. I can paste it there. Then I can print this and maybe change its font color to something like, uh, let me click on more colors. Then I can choose this one and I click OK. I can also increase the font size by clicking on home menu. And then I can click on 12. This font color can be bold and let it be black. So I can have that as my setup for my design or for my master page. So this is what is going to be applied across my publication whenever I choose the master page A. Let me click on save button. Now to go back to the publication, you click on the view menu and then master page. You click on the view menu and then you click on master page. And then you click on master page menu and you can now apply the design by clicking on apply to, either apply to all pages, apply to current page, or apply master page. For now, let me not apply. Let me click on close master page button. So we have been taken back to our many page. You can see that already the design for my master page has been applied on this first page. The reason is because I have only a single page and therefore my design has been applied on the first page automatically without even clicking apply to. If I add a new page, and to add a new page, I can click on insert menu, and then I can click on insert blank page. So let me click on insert black page. We see what will happen. So let me click on insert black blank page. You can see that page one looks that way. If I click on page two, you can see that also page two has the same design as page one. But the first one is written, the footer is page one, as you can see, while the other one is page two. So you can see that 
the design that they are put under the master page has been applied on my pages. So that's how you design the master page. You design or you include in the master page whatever you'd like to appear in the pages into which that master page is applied to. How do we move margins, columns, rows, and ruler guides in a publication? You can only move margin guides, column guides, and row guides on a master page. It can be done as follows. On the view menu, you click master page. Then to display the guidance, click on page design, selecting guidance, and then click on grid and baseline guidance. Set them and click OK. If guides or ruler are not displayed on the page, you click on view menu and click on their respective check boxes. Next, you position the mouse pointer over the margin guide, column guide, or a row guide that you want to move until you see the vertical or horizontal and just pointer. Let me repeat. Position the mouse pointer over the margin guide, column guide, or row guide that you want to move until you see the vertical or horizontal and just the pointer and then press down your left mouse button. To move a horizontal ruler guide, position the mouse pointer over the horizontal ruler guide until you see the pointer change to horizontal and just the pointer. To move a vertical ruler guide, position the mouse pointer over the vertical ruler guide until you see the pointer change to vertical and just the pointer. Then drag the guide to its new position and release the mouse button. To apply the changes, click on master page menu, then click apply to tool and specify where to apply the changes from the master page. To return to your publication page, click master page menu, then click on close master page tool. The following is therefore a sample demonstration on how to move various guides in the master page and position some elements in the publication saved as introduction to MLE swap. So while in this publication, you can see that our publication has two pages. It has page one and page two. For us to be able to make any changes in our guides, we have to be in the master pages guide or master uh, uh, pages. We have to be in the master pages because the changes can only be made from the master page, especially when those changes are to do with the guides. And therefore, you click on view menu and then master page. So you can see we have two master pages. We have master page one that has some of the designs that you have placed and master page two that is currently blank. So I want to make some changes on master page B. So how do we make the changes? So we have said you can always click on the view menu. And then once you've clicked on the view menu, you can display the guides that you want to see. For example, if I want to display the baselines, I can display them. If I want to display or hide the margins, you can see I can hide them by unchecking guides, or you can click on guides to display them. You can then adjust your guides the way you want. So if I want to adjust this guide, 
the top margin guide, I can point on it. Once my mouse pointer changes to that uh, shape, I can press down mouse button and drag my guide down once, like that, up to one. So you can see that I have increased my top margin. I can also do the same to my right margin. So I can point on my right margin. Then once my mouse pointer changes, I can drag it in one. So let me adjust it all the way to seven that way. And then you release the mouse pointer. Let me also adjust for my left so that I increase it to one. So I'll point on to it. Once the mouse pointer changes, I press down mouse button and drag to one that way. If I want to display the ruler or to adjust or move the ruler guides, I can point, for example, on the horizontal guide and drag it to where I want, for example, to that point and drag or and release. And I can also do the same to other guides. So if, for example, I want to position something um, uh, between this part, that is two and three. So I can adjust the vertical guide to three that way. You can see that my guides are intersecting at this point. And therefore, I can place an object that I want at that position precisely. So the guides help us be able to position our images or objects using precise measurements. So I can, for example, insert and click on insert menu and choose, for example, a wand out of my choice, like that one. And then I can write here um, MLE swap. I can type MLE swap. And then I can click OK. And then I can drag this one up to the intersection between my vertical and horizontal rulers, or let me call them the column guides. However, remember I said that column guides can always be inserted differently from the ruler and the margin guides. Then I can click on save button to save my changes. If you want to display the column guides and the row guides so that I'm able to have certain number of columns in my publication, what am I supposed to do? So you do it as follows. You click on page design and then click on guides. And then I can click on grid and baseline guides. Then under margin or under the margin guides, you can see, you can specify your margins. You can change the measurements. Under grid lines, I can decide to have two columns for my publication or for my page. And under row guides, I can have three row guides. And then I can click on OK. And you can see that some column guides have been added to my publication. So I can replace, for example, I can drag a mini swap to one of the columns, let me drag it up to here. I can drag it up to there, up to top here. And then I can uh, fit it within the margins here. 
Remember, this is our column guide. So I can copy it and paste it in my second column. So I, I can drag this um, wonder art to another, to the other column that way. And I can drag it a little bit and fit it that way. So you can see that MLE swap wonder art has been fixed on the two columns. So I can then save my master page. Then I can close. I can click on master page and close master page. So let me click on close master page. So from this publication, you can see that my two pages have the application or have the master page A applied. If I want to change, if I want to apply the settings for page two to be different from those of page one, then I can go to the master pages. I go to master page two and I apply it to page two so that the two pages are different. So for me to do that, I need to click on view menu, then click master page. You can see I have the first master page, master page A, which looks that way. And I have master page B that looks this way. So if I want to apply master page B to my publication, I'll click on master page B, then click on apply to this button here. And then I will choose the page to apply this setting to. So apply, apply, I can click on apply master page. Then I choose the page. So let me apply that to page two. So I don't need to have it as one to two. Let me just um, click on apply to page two. So pages two. Then I can click OK. You can see I'm being told a whole number, and a whole number that is between one and two. So what you need to do, what you need to do is to make your page current, and then you click on the current page. So let me repeat. So let me close master page. I want to apply my design to page two. So I'll click on page two. And then I click on the view menu, click on master page, and then um, click on the master page I want to apply. So I want to apply master page B to my page two, which I've already selected. So I'll click on apply to, and then I will click on apply to current page. Then I can click on save button and click on close master page. So let's see if our page one and page two are different. So this is page one. You can see master page A has been applied to page one. While master page B has been applied to page two. So after you design your master pages, if you have, you want to have different designs within your publication for different pages, you can have master pages with the settings that you want or designs that you want, and then you can always apply any of them to the page of your choice. Always remember to click on save button. So that's how you design a master page and apply the master settings on design to any page of your choice within your publication. How do you delete a master page? So if you are through with using your master page or master pages, you can always delete them. So to delete a master page, 
you click on view menu and select the master page. Then in the pages task pane, you click on the master page you want to delete. And then you click on delete from the master page toolbar. Then if an alert is generated in the alert box, you click yes. So the following is a sample demonstration on how to delete a master page for the publication saved as introduction to Emily Swap. So in this publication, remember we have two pages and we also have two master pages. So for me to delete a master page, I have to view the master pages first. So click on view menu and then click on master page. So these are our two master pages. Let me delete master page B and return master page one. So I'll click on the master page that I want to delete. And then from the master page toolbar, I'll click on delete. So let me click on delete. You can see I'm being asked, are you sure you want to delete this master page? If this master page is applied to any of your publication pages, the first, uh, the first master page will be applied in its place. So remember, I have already applied master page two or master page B to my second page in the publication. So if I delete this master page, I'm being informed that the design in master page one or master page A will be applied in my pages. So let me click on yes. So we have deleted the second master page. Let me click on save button and click on close master page. If you look on this publication, deleting a master page does not lead to deletion of the pages in your publication. You can see I still have two pages. I have page one and page two. After deleting the master page B, which was applied in page two, you can see that what I have now is that page two has the master page A applied into it. So all the pages have the design for master page A. Why? Because the master page that I had applied, the settings or the design for the master page B that I had applied in page two cannot continue being in place due to the fact that I have deleted the master page that had those settings or that had the design for page two. And therefore, the only master page that we have is master page A, and that is what has been applied across my two pages. You can also edit a master page. To edit a master page, on the view menu, you click master page. Then in the pages task pane, click on the master page you want to edit. Make the required changes and save it. Click on master page menu, then click apply to tool and select the pages to apply the changes to. Note, you mostly use apply to when you want that design or when you have several master pages and you want it to apply different settings to different pages. But when you have only a single master page, most of the pages in your publication will have the design for that master page applied. Then you click on close master page to go back to the publication. So the following is a sample demonstration on how to edit a master page for my publication by the name Introduction to MN Swap. So I want to make 
some small changes in my master page, especially to include time and my footer. So for me to have time included as footer in my publication, what I need to do, or for example, if I want to include date, I can click on view menu, then click on master page. Then I have a single master page, which is master page A. While here, I can click on insert menu. So let me click on insert menu. And then from the insert menu, I can click on what I want to insert, which is date and the time. So I can click on date and the time from the insert toolbar. I'm being told to insert a date field, click in a text box or a table. So let me click OK. I want to insert it as my footer. So let me click on the footer and then I can move my mouse pointer or cursor where I want the date and time to be placed. And then let me also align these two and let me have it aligned to the left. And then let me insert now the date and time here. So I will click on insert menu, insert menu, and then I'll click on date and the time. So let me click on date and time tool. Then I choose the format for my date. Let me choose the format for my date, uh, one which also includes time. So I will select this one here. Let me choose this one, which indicates the date and also the time and the seconds. But when in the seconds, no, let me click on this one, which has the date and the time. If I want the time and the date to be changing automatically, I can choose update automatically checkbox. Then I click on OK. So you can see that the date and the time have been included. So I can click on save button here. Then I can close on master page. So I'll click on master page menu, then and apply to, of course, I can choose apply to all. But before I click on apply to all, my dear students, the rest of the learners, Let's see what will happen if I don't click apply to. So let me click on the close master page. We are back to our publication. Let's scroll at the bottom and see whether our data and time have been included. Yes, they have. You can see we have our data and time here. Let's go to page two and see whether it has been added to whether the changes have been applied. You can see this is page two. Page two, it has also been applied. So just as I said, if your publication is making use of only a single master page, whatever you make, whatever changes you make into your master page, that change is applied across, even without clicking on the apply to. So apply to, is always applicable in a situation where you have several pages or you have two master pages and therefore you have to choose which master page to apply to which pages. So that's how we modify our master page. You can also change the page properties. So if you want to add, for example, more pages in the publication, while on the pages pane, you right click on the pages thumbnail 
that will come either before or after the page you want to end. Then you click on insert page. In the insert menu dialog box, you select the options you want, and then you click OK. So the following is a sample demonstration on how to add some pages in our publication by the name Introduction to Emily Swap. So as you can see in this publication, we have two pages. So we can add more pages to this publication. So if you want to add pages either before or after page one, you click on that page thumbnail. So let me click on thumbnail for page one, and then you click on insert menu, and then you click on page, and then you can insert a blank page, you can create a duplicate of the page that when they have, or you can click on insert the page to give you room to specify more pages. So let me click on insert page. From the insert page dialog box, you can type the number of pages you want to insert. Let me choose two. So I'll type two. Then do I want them to be before current page? That is before page one or after page one. So let me insert my new pages between page one and page two. So I'll choose after current page. Do I want to insert black pages? Create one text box on each page or duplicate the objects on page one. So because there are no objects that are in page one, because there's nothing we have added to page one by its own, Whatever we have displayed is what is in the master page. So we don't have anything in the page one, nor in the page two. So this is because you have not added anything directly into page one or page two. And for that reason, you can see we don't have um, um, any specific items, but we can still duplicate our objects on the page one on on the page if there is anything. So let me not bother with duplicating. Let me just click on insert blank pages. And then we can click OK to see what will happen. So let me click on OK. So we have our pages now. These are four pages. So page one looks that way. Page two looks that way. You can only see the difference at the footer here, this is page two. This is page three. This is page four. So all my pages are blank and they look the same. So that's how you insert the pages in your publication. However, if you had a page that are certain elements and you want to create a duplicate for it, what you do is if you want to, to add a page which is a complete replica of another page, you right click on the pages thumbnail from the pages pen for the page that you want to duplicate. Then click on insert duplicate page. A duplicate page will be inserted into publication immediately after the selected page. So the following is a sample demonstration on how to add a duplicate page in the publication saved as introduction to Emily Swap. So let me add some elements in page one so that we can see the difference between duplicating and inserting. So on this page, let me add something. For example, let me insert um, an outer shape there. So I can choose a certain outer shape. Let me choose 
this auto ship and have it somewhere like here. So that's my auto ship. And I can also create another one and uh, insert it or paste it here. And I can also, no, let, those are enough. Let me save this. So save. You can see this is page one. If I duplicate, if I want to create a complete replica of this page, I can click on the page that I want to create a replica for, and then I can right click on it. Then I can click on insert duplicate page. So let me click on insert duplicate page. You can see that now my publication has five pages. That is page one, page two, page three, page four, and page five. So we have duplicated page one. This was our first page, which is page one. We have created a duplicate for it. And it has been certain just next to the page we have duplicated. So let's click on page two and see whether it resembles page one. You can see this is page two. You can see from the footer, it is page two. And therefore, we have been able to create a complete replica of our page one. And always remember to save your changes. What about if you don't require certain pages in your publication? How do you delete them? So to delete a page, you right click on its page thumbnail from the pages pane. Then you click on delete. If you want to undo deletion, you click on undo button from the quick access toolbar. Note that if you are in a two page spread view, Delete page dialog box will appear. So to select the option you want, or in other words, if you are in a two-page spread view and you click on delete, the delete page dialog box is going to appear. So you select the option that you want and click OK. In other words, you select or you make a decision as to which page you want to delete, and then you click OK. So the following is a sample demonstration on how to delete a page if the publication saved as introduction to ML Swap. So in this publication, where we have five pages, we can uh, delete one of the pages that is a duplicate of the other. So I can click on page one and delete it. So I'll click on this page. That is, I'll click on page one's thumbnail. Then I right click on it and click on delete. The selected page contains objects. Do you want to delete anyway? I'll click yes. Let me click on yes. So you can see page one has been deleted and the others have been adjusted. So the current page one is the one which was page two. If you want to undo the deletion, I can click on undo delete page from the quick access toolbar, this one here. So I can click on undo. And you can see my page one has been returned. Let me redo. So I can click on redo delete page because it is intentional. And then let me click on save button from the quick access toolbar. The other activity you can perform when you are designing your publication is to change the paper size. You can change the paper size of your publication as follows. 
You click on Paint Design menu and select Size button. Then from the size drop down list box, you click on the paper size that you want from those listed. However, if the size you want is not listed, you can click on more preset paper sizes from the list. Then browse for your size, select it and click OK. Or you can customize yours by clicking on the page setup from the list then set its specifications from the page setup dialog box displayed and click OK. So this can be done as follows in our publication. So while in this publication, if you wanted to change the paper size for our publication, we can click on page design menu. So let me click on page design menu. And then you can see sizes here. So you click on size and then choose the paper that you want. So currently our paper is A4 portrait. We can change it to um, A3 portrait. But if our paper size is not listed, I have said you can click on page setup, this one. So if you click on page setup, you can decide to have your own specifications under page setup. So let me click on the cancel and click on size. Then I will select A3 portrait. So let me click on A3 portrait. So that is my paper size. Remember, if the content on your page is not visible, you can always zoom your publication or your page by clicking on the view menu, then you click under the percent. That way, or you even you can even zoom it further by adjusting the percentage through this button here. So that's how that's how we change our paper size. Always remember to click on save button. And you can see that after changing my paper size, even the placement for my um, design has also changed. So I need to go and make amendments on my master page. So I need to modify my master page. So to modify my master page, I will click on view menu and then click master page. And then I can now be adjusted. So let me move this picture to where it was. I also need to adjust this um, header. So I'll adjust it up to there. Then I'll place my picture on the corner there. And then I can drag my um, header place folder there. Then at the bottom of the page, I can place my picture. I can drag my picture to where it was, to that section there. And then I can also adjust or modify my footer. That way, then this one, I can align it by clicking on home then write alignment that way and I can increase the space for my footer that way. And then I can save my master page. Then I can click on master page and click on close master page. So you can see that my Pages have been readjusted. If I click page two, page three, page four, you can see they have been readjusted. On the page one, you can now decide to place these uh, uh, images where you want because these are not part of the master page and that's why they are not appearing in all the pages. So let me just place it somewhere there. 
And uh, this one, you can drag it to another location. Let me place it somewhere like here. That is for page one. And you can always save your publication. So that's how you change the paper size. Remember, when you change the paper size, it's always good to modify your master page just as you have seen. You can also add a pattern or a color to a page. So if you want to add pattern or color to a single page, you go to the page you want to change by clicking on its thumbnail from the pages pane. Then on the page design menu, click background. Select the background of your choice from the drop down list by clicking on it, then click OK where necessary. So the following is a demonstration on how we can change the background for at least one or two pages in our publication. So while in back in our page, let's uh, minimize, let's zoom uh, a little bit so that we're able to see our page. So if I click 100%, that's how 100% looks like. Let me reduce it from 100% to, let me click whole page. You can see, this is purely for the sake of being able to work on it. And then we want to change the background color for some of the pages. So let me change background color for page one. So what you do, you click on that page, on that page's thumbnail, that way. Then you click on, you click on page design. So let me click on page design menu. And the page design menu, you click on background tab or background button here. Then you can choose more backgrounds and select the background of your choice. You can click on no fill, solid fill, pattern on gradient fill, or even you can use a picture. So let me choose a solid fill. And then we can select our filling from here. If I choose yellow, how will it look like? Let's just choose it and click OK. You can change it. Let me click again on background, more colors, and then we can choose something else like picture or text field. And then once you do that, you are supposed to browse for your picture. Let me click on gradient. If you click on gradient, you can see what is there. If you click on picture, you browse for your picture. If you click on pattern fill, you choose a pattern of your choice. So if you don't want, or if you want to remove any of the backgrounds, patterns or color, you click on no fill. So let me click on solid fill. Then I click on color. I can click on more colors. Then click on a color of my choice. So let me choose this one. Then I will click on OK. And lastly, I click on OK. I can zoom my screen so that I see how my page will look like. So let me click on percent So that's how my page is going to look like. But I can change this background again. So let me click on page design menu, then background here. I want to choose blue, sky blue. So I can change again here. I'll click on more colors and choose some sky blue or some blue type of which one which is a little bit bright, that one. Then I can click OK, then OK. So at least that is the color 
for my page. That's how you change the background for a single page. Let me also change for page two. So you click on page two thumbnail, then click on page design and the background, choose the background of your choice. So I'll choose another one here. This time around, I'll choose gradient fill and I'll choose one which is there, which is this one and I click, okay. So that's how you change each page's background. Then remember to click on save button. You can also add the pattern or color to every page in the publication. You can change a master page to add a pattern or a color that appears on every page to which that master page is applied. To do this, you click on the view menu and then click master page. Select the master page in which to apply the background to by clicking on its thumbnail from the master pages pane. Then on the design menu, page design menu, click background. Select a background of choice by clicking on it. Then save your master page and click on master pages menu. Then click on apply to and specify where the background should be applied in your publication. To return to a publication page, you click close master page from the toolbar. The following is therefore a demonstration on how to make use of master pages to add a pattern or a color across the pages in the publication named as or saved as introduction to MLE swap. So if you want to apply a certain background color across all the pages in this publication, I will apply my background to my master page. So this is done by clicking on the view menu. So let me click on the view menu, then click master page. This publication has only a single master page. So I'll click on pages A. And then I'll click on page design menu. Then under page design menu, I will click on background just as I have done for each of the pages. And then I'll click on it. Then click more backgrounds. Then for my filling, I can click on solid fill and then I can browse for my fill. If you want to choose tints, I can click on tints. Let me click on tints so that you see what it is. So that's what we are calling tints and you can even change the color. So for example, I can choose that color and click OK. Then I can click OK again. And then I click OK to apply. So you can see how it looks like. If I click on Save button, then I click on Master Page, and I click on Close Master Page. We expect to see all our pages in the publication having this background. So let's see. Let me click on Close Master Page. You see that our background has not been applied in all the pages. Why do you think that is so? I have not applied or I have not clicked on apply. So let me go back again. Click on view, then click master page. Then this is our master page. I can now click on apply to button here. So let me click on apply to at the master page. And then I click on apply to all pages. So let me click on apply to all pages. Let me click on save again and click on close master page. Has that changed 
been applied to all the pages? Yes. Remember, the first page already had its own background. The second page had its own background. So what I changed is page three and page four. If I want to replace the first background, I can select current page that way. I click on view menu, then master page. And then I can click here, apply to current page. So then we click on apply to current page. Then let's close master page and see what has happened. So let me click on close master page. You see, my dear students and best of the learners, what do you see? What can you say? It seems that the background is still in place for page one and page two. So if I want to have the master page applied in all the pages, I have to remove the first background. So I am going to click on um, background. So I'll click on page design. I'll choose my page first, then click page design. Then at the background, I'll click there, and then I'll click no background. So I'll click on no background. You can see after clicking on no background, the background for the master has already been applied. So the background applied to a specific page is not overridden by the one for the master page. So if you want, if already your page had its own background and you want it to have it replaced by the background for the master, you have to remove that background first. You can see page two still has its own background. So if I remove the background for page two, the background from the master will prevail. So let me remove the background for page two. So I'll click on page two, then click on page design, and then under background, I'll click background. And then I'll choose no background. Once I choose that, the background for the master will take precedence. So let me remove it. You can see. You can now see that all our pages have the same background. If you click page one, page two, page three, and page four, you can see that the background for the master has now taken a preference. It is applied across all the pages. So whereas there is a change for the background from the master, you can always have a specific background for a specific page. And whenever you don't set a background for a specific page, then the background from the master will take precedence. So let me click on save button. And with that, we have come to the end of part three of this series. You can continue to part four, in which we are going to learn on how you can manipulate and format the text in your publication. Congratulations for learning part three of nine on designing a publication in desktop publishing series. You can access the rest of the parts in this series, as well as other computer, or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. To subscribe to the channel, tap on subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me. Let's meet in part four of this series, and God bless.